On today's podcast, two sweaty PvP pirates with a love of Flameheart and a combined 10,000 hours in-game take the time to talk their perspectives on the Sea of Thieves, what they're looking for in the future, and after an encounter with toxic cheaters, their feelings on anti-cheat. I'm John Bardcore, and this is Build Talk. And here we are once again at Build Talk in the lair of the Reaper's hideout with Potbeard and Spooky. How are you two doing, fellas? Doing pretty well, John. How's it going? It's going. It is going. Thank you for the invitation. I don't have normally have uh, rights to be down here, but uh, I appreciate the fact that you two uh, welcome me down here with open arms. Well, we, 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 we've seen you fight. You, you're, you're worthy of the ranks down here. Yeah, all, all of those with fire in their heart and steel in their bones are worthy. <laughs> Absolutely. And that actually is a good is a good segue to my very first question. How important was it for you two when this was announced, when season when season eight uh, was announced and they said, hey, we've got a Reaper's Lair for those of you who want to fight for the servants. How important was it for you two to get down here as fast as you could? Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start this one. But basically, uh, I made a galleon. We called it the Burning Blade. I put the Burning Blade sails on it. I put Royal Revenge cannons on it. We decked it out to make it look as flame hardy as possible. Um, I wore the uh, the Emporium. What is it? The Dark Warsmith costume to to look like Flameheart. <laughs> Everybody was wearing the Ashen Curse on the ship. And for about two weeks straight, we uh we no life the game and uh, got. Our skelly curses. Yeah, it, was, it was great. We 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 screamed. Your supplies must be dwindling by now. And, from... That's true. And, and the best part for me personally of season eight was like season eight actually came out on my birthday, which was awesome. So I was like, oh sweet birthday present to me. I get to get this amazing PvP update where I finally get to actually fight for the Reapers. You know, put away those stinky pirate legends because you know they're they're no good. And you know. Save our boy Flameheart. That's what we're here for. Help help Junior reunite with his dad. That's that's the real mission. I gotta ask, how close are you two to Golden Bones? <laughs> that that is uh, my current goal. Yeah, my my goal right now is uh is um what is it? His favorite crew, but I never get to find Athena ships, so I can't progress the uh commendation. And, and Golden yeah. Bones is secondary at the moment, but but, yeah, for, but I'll get there eventually. For me, I have done all of the auxiliary stuff that I need to, so it's purely levels now, and I am just past three hundred at the moment. All right. Uh, I assume I assume that both of you will be taking advantage of uh, the next uh, community weekend now that they are doing community weekends for uh for allegiance boosting yeah 100 percent. it's definitely a lot easier to grind uh during it's... the uh community weekends for sure it's it, it makes you know when you do lose occasionally less painful and the wins are so much sweeter uh it's also very good for me as a low population server like australia is because with the incentive of double reputation you get a lot more fights which makes it even just better to seek glory in hourglass that that was honestly like why i i kind of took a break because i kind of stopped playing hourglass back in december because you know they hadn't done the the stamp merging fixes yet cheaters were really rampant um and it just got to a point where we would we'd queue up on the galleon and, and we'd fight the same crew we'd wait 30 minutes it'd be the same crew of cheaters and it's just like, it was no fun. It's just, it's not fun when you dive, you sit around for 30 minutes and then it's like, oh cool, it's the galleon that cheats. And it just got very disheartening. So like, I definitely took a break, but I've been getting back into it again because I want my gold bones. Like once, once I do get gold bones, I will never, ever put this outfit on ever again, which is sad because I, I love this outfit, but, but gold bones. <laughs> And for those who may not be familiar with the outfit, what exactly is the outfit that you're wearing? Uh, this outfit is basically just me and trying to show like the history of my pirate. So I've got my day one eye patch. I've got the black dog jacket from the pre-order. 
I always really liked, I wanted to have like a black hat with a feather and I never liked the uh, ghost Athena hat. So I picked the uh, sovereign hat. Um, I got my bone crusher gloves from doing, uh, and the bone crusher curse from doing um, curse sales back year one. I've got the wailing barnacle belt from sunken curse year one as well. I, Spooky told me to put the Shark Slayer title on, but I was like, nah, I, I, I rock Wandering Reaper. That's my favorite title. And then I have my uh, my Ghost Pirate boots, because I remember I actually unlocked those and bought those before I hit Pirate Legend back in year one, because one of my buddies hit PL before me, and uh, he was like, you want to do an Athena Voyage? And I was like, sure. And then, you know, 93 painful Athena Voyages later, eventually I hit Athena 10. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair. And then, uh, Spooky, do you have a, a particular history with your outfit? I do. Um, it, it has evolved over the um, over my time as a pirate. It was once a male pirate, it's now a female pirate. Um, but um, I wear my at forsaken tattoos and scars as that was the region I reached pirate legend in way back when i wear tsd belt to show my achievements in the arena i wear boots of courage to show my uh events in year two and i wear the flame art hat to show my allegiance to our glorious king <laughs> that's right king flame art uh, both of you, uh, very, very particular in making sure that you're on point with the with the Flameheart uh, role play. I appreciate that. I do. <laughs> I've I've literally been a Flameheart fanboy. I mean, since basically before the game came out. You know, reading uh, Tales from the Sea like really got me because I've I've read all the peripherals. As I'm as much as like I got into this game for PvP, I got hooked on the lore. And became like a super like RP level like lore nerd. And so like that's part of like when I PvP, you know, I'm like I'm trying to RP being a pirate. Like that's like there have been times where we it's worked too. It's funny. We'll we'll tell somebody we like, hey, you know, drop your anchor, surrender, we're coming aboard to search, and you know, if you know, you give us what we want, you know, you won't be harmed, we'll leave you go. And occasionally people take us up on it. Usually when we're on the galleon though, it's a bit more intimidating than the sloop. <laughs> You know what? Uh, you know, seeing seeing a wandering reaper galleon coming at you, you know, you kind of kind of question your choices a little bit. Right. <laughs> um, but that brings up an interesting point. Um, you know, you're talking about you know being into the lore of the game. Uh, you're talking about your history with the game. How did you How did you two first come to learn about Sea of Thieves? Like, and and what kind of drew you to it? It was 2019, and I had just gotten my first Xbox. Very exciting, and Game Pass was a relatively new thing at the time, and Sea of Thieves was on, and I thought, free game, might as well try it. And the moment I logged onto the game after creating my pirate, I saw the water graphics, and that that was it. That was history. I, I now play the game as I do now, and the water still amazes me, whatever region I'm in, because it just looks so amazingly beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I can't disagree with that. The water, every every time, like, after I take a break and I log back into the game, and I'm like, God, this game is beautiful. But I I first heard about Sea of Thieves way back, like, 2014, 2015. I heard whispers that there was a pirate game coming out. And then there was the, you know, trailer back in 2016. And I was big into World of Warcraft at the time, and so I kind of forgot about that. And then all of a sudden I saw the trailer come back out again, and I was like, oh, my God, yeah, that's that pirate game I wanted to play. The PvP and the naval combat looks so dope, and um, because that that that's what attracted me to it. Like, I I, and it's funny because when I first started, I uh, the very first mission I ever did in Sea of Thieves was an Order of Souls mission because I was like I was drawn to the the Sea Dog aesthetic, so I wanted you know like the Sea Dog cosmetics. So I um, I did an Order of Souls mission. I did a bounty voyage, and on that bounty voyage. I got a disgraced skull from from my very first captain that I killed. And it was the funniest thing because I grabbed the skull, got back to my boat, swam up the ladder carrying the skull, 
and then tried to grab the wheel because, you know, it's my first night on Sea of Thieves. What do I know about playing the game? And I could not, for the life of me, figure out how to drop the skull to get me to hold the wheel. And I was like, I can go up and down the ladder, but I can't get on the wheel. What is this magic? Like, how do I how do I drop this item? And I'm like scrolling through the uh, through the menu, trying to find the hotkey. And I, apparently, I just never noticed it. But and then I ended up logging off because I I was like, I don't know how to. I can't sell my boat. I have treasure, but I don't know what to do with it. And uh, that was that was my first night on Sea of Thieves. And then after that, it was a month of me and two of my friends, because we only had three of us at the beginning, and we three-manned a galleon for pretty much everything we did. And all we did was uh, server hop for skelly forts and PvP our brains out, because that's... Like, me and one of my buddies, we bought it for PvP. Our other buddy, who actually was a brave vanguard, um, he mainly liked the PvE. But the two of us were bloodthirsty. <laughs> so PV PvP is why I got into this game. And then I fell in love with the, the lore as a secondary. And how many hours do each of you have in the game now at this point? Um, too many. <laughs> From recent calculations, it's over 6,000 now. Well, as I recall, you had 2,000 more than me, so I'm probably at 4,000 if you're at 6,000. <laughs> awesome. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm, 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 I'm highlighting here just the amount of uh, attention that you both have kind of put into the game um, and the fact that you can, you know, whether it's PvP and role play yourself as a pirate um, or whether it's going ahead and just being badasses on the on the field is just uh in arena or an hourglass um or you know every now and again handle yourself in some pve action you know why not um there's always something for everyone in the game um how did you two come together though because we've got someone coming in from 2019 we've got someone coming in from practically day one how'd you two meet um we met actually about was it two years ago Two, two and a half, something like that. Yeah, so, so like two, two and a half years ago through the Sea of Thieves Discord of all things. I think, uh, what what were we doing? Just I looked for somebody doing we YouTube were, or something? No, we were doing Athena. We, um, we, well, at least I, I still needed my Athena kegs. Cause this oh, was... that's right. We were doing Thieves Haven runs because you needed things that I have, like, was doing Emissary for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah, you were. It was good. That's funny. Yeah. No, it's 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 been a, it's been a, it's been a hot minute. And did you take time in doing arena before Hourglass, or did you, or was that not a thing at that point? Um, no, both of us did uh, arena together. We did some galley arena and a little bit of sloop, but most of my arena I did like in Arena 1.0, like with my original crew. We we went on like a 32 game win streak the first day. It was pretty pretty fun. <laughs> Yeah, I only I only dabbled in 1.0 on and off a bit, because 1.0 was quite a high skill level for OC. There were a lot of sweaty TDMers and people who were just better as a, as a at PvP than I was at the time, because I was very much a PVEer. Um, but maybe six months before. I met Popbeard, I met a um, quite competent crewmate, and we, over a week's period, did 130 wins in Arena, um, which basically got me to TSD, and then I found Popbeard and later on did um, the last little stretch to Legendary Sea Dog. It was a hard grind. That was that was that was a brutally unfun grind, is what that was. But the cool thing about 1.0 Arena was you could actually, you know, talk to people, and then there was the tavern, and you could talk to people in the tavern, and so like you could meet people that way, and like you know have good, you know, occasionally there were people who were toxic, but every once in a while, you know, you had good wholesome PvP, and like I think that's kind of one of the biggest problems with the game right now is just the fact that like, like so earlier tonight. We uh we grabbed two reaper chests and people actually tried to hunt hunt us, which I thought was great. I awesome, you know. I I grabbed the PvP object and PvP came to me. But 
but we tried to communicate with the crews because I, I usually try to be sociable and you know like some you know do some some pirate jousting you know insult insult based sword fighting you know when when I'm running around nothing toxic but just you know in the in the mood of being a pirate and, like, nobody the, talks like, anymore. Scouting. Like nobody, nobody talks in the game anymore, and I don't know if it's just people are antisocial, people don't have mics, or if it's like you know they're on Xbox and like you know the weird issues with uh, game chat. But like, one of the greatest things about this game to me has always been the player interaction. And I know Rare stresses that all the time, but it's true. Like, I so many people that I've played this game with, I met in a fight, and we were fighting each other. And then after the fight, we were like, "Yo, you're awesome." Yeah, you're awesome too. Let's, you know, fight other people together. And like, you know, that's how I met a lot of people in this game. And like, I, I just wish more people would be, I guess, more social. Like, yeah, it sucks when people are toxic. And like, I get the want to, you know, be quiet because you're worried that people are going to be toxic. But like, I don't know, just take a chance, you know, like people in this game are usually pretty chill. I mean, yeah, you, you get toxic people, but. For the most part, I, I think most people are pretty chill. I, I agree. I I too met people that I've been long time crew with. Around the period of arena closure, I was doing some arena and I met my current Australian based um PvP crew. Um and it's been What's it been now? A year, year and a half, two, two years, and we're still going strong. So it's it's good fun and communication m makes or breaks this game. Um, but if you have people who are willing to talk, you can make very long-lasting friendships and memories. That that I can attest to myself. <laughs> uh, for those who haven't for those who haven't watched. Uh, uh, Spooky and Potbeard, I actually met them on the seas. Uh, I posted it as a short, um, and it was just through a simple communication uh, that, you know, we came to understand each other. Um, we were fighting over a Fort of Fortune. Uh, they were absolutely destroying me, and I would not, uh, I would not give up. And uh, eventually, uh, it came to a point where I just had to just surrender. Uh, both had boarded me and were basically cheering me on as I repaired my own ship. <laughs> and But afterwards, we had a great time, and uh, they invited me down to the Reaper's Lair for the very first time. So, and that's why, you know, we're able to uh, talk to you all here today as part of this podcast. So I can absolutely attest to uh, what Popbeard is saying uh, and Spooky are saying about communication. I love communication in the game. I think it's a, I think it's a fantastic aspect that doesn't get utilized enough. That being said, I'm curious, uh, and since we've been talking about PvP um, and just where where the trends are going, I'm curious as to, and we'll start with Spooky first. I'm, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on on the balance right now in the game? You know, we're five years in. What are the what are your thoughts on the balance between PVE and PvP gameplay in Sea of Thieves? I think it's very. I don't want to say heavily skewed, but I think it is skewed towards PvE more than PvP. And this was really highlighted when they introduced Hourglass, because as soon as Hourglass was introduced, all the PvPers were sucked out of adventure and thrown into their little battle area where they could fight other people um, who also wanted to fight which is great for us. We love fighting competent crews. It's all about the thrill of battle, and it's it's a lot of fun. But now, as I sail the seas, be that with Poppy or not, unfortunately, they seem dead to an extent. You, it's hard to find people, and if you do, they're they're not um, willing to fight, or you're not going to find any intense fights unless you do hourglass so i think if they could incorporate hourglass more into um adventure to liven up the servers again be that you finish a fight you have maybe a five minute period where you can't dive 
and you're like marked on the map i'm not i'm not sure what they'd have to do but it it would it would bring liveliness back into the world and i think that's a really important feature of the game to make it feel like a a world with different crews different people that you meet from all walks of their pirate life so do you think then i'll, I'll ask a follow up here do you think then for example uh back before you know back before we had emissaries and and before you know um hourglass and and even you know arena we had the reaper's mark flag um do you feel like for example if you go to hourglass if you go to dive you have to have a reaper's mark flag up so that way you're always visible regardless of whether you're a reaper regardless of whether you're athena you're always visible on the map i i i do think that would be a, quite a good idea actually because we the the reaper's mark was an amazing tool for year one we didn't have emissaries we didn't have reaper's emissary or reaper's bones whatsoever but if you had the reaper's mark up you you were down for a fight and i have so many vivid memories of absolute mayhem be that from a fight that turned friendly or just an out all-out brawl for a fleet or a skeleton fort or someone just stacking loot that we've stumbled across with the flag up. It, it was an amazing tool, and I think they need more aspects like that, be that a different type of flag or something that just brings people closer together and gives more incentive for them to interact with other pirates to make the balance a little bit more even. And Popbeard, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I agree with most of what Spooky said. Basically... You know, I'll sink ships just to sink ships, just because every once in a while I have my bloodthirsty moods, and I'm like, all right, if it, if it's on the seas, it's going to be beneath the waves. But at the end of the day, like, and this is why sometimes I get bored with Hourglass, is because half the ships that you fight in Hourglass, one, they're the same faction as you, so you can't even progress, you know, half the commendation. Two, nobody flies a damn flag, which I don't know why. Like, there's no reason not to fly the flag, but whatever. Um... And, and like, I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a pirate. I, it's so satisfying when you sink a ship and then all that treasure floats up. And like something that I've always done, uh, and Spooky's gotten mad at me at a couple of times because I like to stack treasure because I believe that's the true spirit of the game is you stack a bunch of treasure. And because because like without that risk and that that's the main reason I stopped doing PVE. It's not that I don't enjoy the PVE in the game. It's just that because nobody really bothers you in adventure anymore like just going around collecting you know treasure doesn't doesn't do it for me anymore like i love that risk that sense of man the you know the adrenaline rush the paranoia of like is somebody coming to steal this like like that that for me is like you know what what makes this game fun and you know i know a lot of people complain about runners and i mean i i hate when people run but like sometimes i do enjoy the thrill of a chase so the one thing i'd like to say to anybody that runs could you at least try to board my ship if you're gonna run just just board me just please give me something to do you might anchor me you might kill me just just please just board us that's all we want i, I agree um the, it's all about the risk and i i have it, it's all about the risk reward balance and in I can there's not enough incentive in hourglass right now for people to defend which is a shame because I think truly the best form of hourglass is defending one you get the most rep like it's it's been proven if you have a great five treasure stash you get an insane amount of rep when you sink another ship like it's crazy how much it doubles it like I think it actually literally doubles it like yeah I all I, I know is like when you're level 100 it normally takes like two to three sinks if you're like grade five emissary to like level but if you're defending you can literally get a level per sink it's it's ridiculous and i wish more people would do it and like that goes to like what spooky was saying about the idea of uh having if you're opted in for hourglass it marks you on the map and there's that cooldown period where you're not allowed to dive because i do think there really does need to be an incentive because like uh, the the war map the war map here in the uh, in the chronicler's room down here in the reaper's lair there's a war map and on that war map you theoretically can see ships that are opted in like of your own faction but if there's a championship and that is the one thing like if there is a championship that does show up on the map for everybody to see but the problem is 
the the meta because people just grind people don't you know really rp into the theme or any of that and you know they're just grinding out for themselves which i get it it's finally you know i do that sometimes too but like it, the concept to me of having the championship was so cool because you it's mar- you're marked on the map you're this cool big target and it's cool that you can see it here on the war room and the map table down here and like you talk to the chroniclers and the chroniclers will tell you which side's winning the war which by the way flame Heart's winning right now so keep it up everybody doing the good work and uh yeah i mean i, I really do think there needs to be more of a reason for people to want to pvp in adventure to want to stack treasure and and it seems like lately the game and i get it you know not everybody has a lot of time because that is one big thing with sea of thieves is that it's a time sink like it, it's definitely like if you really want to have a good session you really need to dedicate like two to three hours i think a way to in, incorporate a an, a an incentive would be to once you reach champion um not all your hourglass value but maybe say half which is i think 26 27 000 gold um i i think for for just a base four i think you shouldn't you shouldn't be able to die for as soon as you reach champion for maybe 10 15 minutes which is um your invade timer your average invade timer so and I think it would give people time to come towards you as a champion because you're marked on the map. And if you could get increased gold, be that not so much, maybe like an extra thousand gold for your every sink afterwards. So 11,000 instead of 10, I believe. I forget. It might be more than that. But anyway, um, get you, incre- you get an increased value for not diving and staying on the same server but people who come towards you get more gold than sinking a normal ship because you are champion because you are staying on the same server it would it would bring more life back into the servers and it would give an incentive to do not pre-matched hourglass fights it would be adventure fights well that and like it would really help thematically like there's supposed to be a war going on right i don't see a war on the seas there's supposed to be one but i i don't see it like it'd be so like One thing that I really wish that they would add, and maybe it'll come in the future, is I'd like to see, like, a fleet battle mode where, like, you know, it's three ships versus three ships. You know, three Athena, three Reapers, and they just duke it out somewhere because that would be awesome. Because, I mean, like, truly for me, the best part of year one, and this is what I will still always miss, and and they kind of, they kind of brought it back with the Chest of Fortune, kind of. But year one skeleton forts were the best thing ever because you could seriously spend six hours fighting over the same fort. And you know what the worst part was? There's no emissary and the payout was terrible. There wasn't even merchant items or stronghold kegs in there when I was doing them. Like there was nothing that the highest tier merchant item was a was a the, the crate of spices. So like 1800 gold, like. There was nothing in that vault. I think the vault back then capped out at like 20, maybe 30,000 gold. And you fought for six hours, six hours sometimes for 30,000 gold. And that's nothing now. That's like a, a, a lost shipment voyage. But you still get more from that. Sure. 30,000 gold was definitely like a good day in year one for sure. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. If year one, if, if you if you if you completed a skeleton for it, that was a good day. If you sold all the loot from a skeleton fort, that was a great day. You made a ton of progress and you were happy about it. I ended my... This was... I I, I joined Shrouded Spoils, so I didn't experience... The pain? The, well, I experienced some, but... Yeah, not all of it. Um, I joined Shrouded Spoils, and by the end of my car- uh, pre-Pirate Legend pirating career, which was maybe about three months... I ended with 1.4 million gold plus some maybe two complete ship sets, which were the Royal Sovereign and the Hunter ship set. So maybe 2.8 million gold. That was, and you all you could do was buy voyages. There was and cosmetics. There was no supplies, no crates, no nothing, no emissary flag. And now you can get 
two million in like five hours if you do it right yeah true like the the inflation in the game is pretty excessive and like the cost of cosmetics is is pretty high because of it and i mean honestly we all know the real root cause of that it was alliance servers when emissaries came out which really bothered me but and now it is like all right whatever like like the the joke my favorite joke is you know the dark adventurer sales everybody's like oh those are the spooky try hard sweat sales i'm like nah those are the alliance server sales those are the guys that sit on a stacked alliance server where there's no threats no risk just grinding like that's that's always been like the joke for us and that's why like i rock my inevitable reaper sales because those are actually sales and cosmetics that required doing PvP, or at least being flagged with uh, the Reaper's Mark. Which, speaking of, like, I really would like to see more Reaper run voyages back and finish my ships, like the Wandering Reaper, the Shipwreck Reaper, the Inevitable Reaper, get some clothing sets, some weapons, because, like, that's the one thing that honestly really feels out of balance right now in the game is cosmetics. Like, because there's... A lot of stuff going to the Emporium, which is fine. I get it. We got to fund the game. But, like, as a as a Reaper enjoyer, like, we totally got shafted with Skelly Curse Cosmetics. Like, Athena got two new clothing sets with equipment sets, two new ships, plus, like, the curses, right? And, the, granted, Skelly Curse is amazing. I love it. And the few permutations that we have right now are awesome. But the fact that we didn't get the Burning Blade and they got to finish the Magpie's Wing irked me to no end and still does. And like, you know, like things like that. And and I do wish like and and speaking of like cosmetics, that are quote unquote PvP really. So like the the Fate of Fortune set, right? That to me also kind of it doesn't have the same value. Like I wish there were more cosmetics in the game that like, I don't know, I guess showed off PvP prowess. Because like I remember back back in year one if if and this this was always funny when it happened because sometimes me and my friends would just sail up to like you know go talk to people but we had our sloop or the galleon and it was decked out with you know the ghost ship cosmetics which back then there were only three pieces there was hull sails uh figurehead and i guess the flag but um if we had the ghost ship galleon on which meant you know we were athena 10 pirate legends which back in year one was like nobody was you know that rank it was rare to see and uh, I remember countless times, ships would just scuttle. They just saw us. And they were like, nope, I don't want none of that. Those are a bunch of sweats. I want nothing to do with that ship. And it was like just this satisfying. Yeah, it was like an ego trip. But like at the same time, it was pretty funny that like you, you really felt like a pirate legend then. Because you were like, all right, I have amassed this really awesome, cool ship that everybody knows is like, that's the tryhard ship. And I want another tryhard ship. Do you do both of you consider yourselves to be quote unquote sweat lords? Sometimes. I, I mean other times I just goof off, but like there are definitely my days where I'm I'm sweaty. I I think I I well, it depends on your definition of sweat lord. I think we we're committed players and I think we're definitely above your average player's skill level. I, I by no means are we the best. Oh no, definitely, definitely not the best. But I, I think we I can think scrap. We we can ha have a good tussle, and I think I think we can definitely call ourselves sweat lords when we feel like it. But we we're, we're also um, gentlemanly pirates when we feel like that's it. That's true. Like that's the one thing that, as much as like my pirate has always been very bloodthirsty, I've always been very gentlemanly about it. I will always offer people the chance to surrender. And like, but I, but I, and this is like what, this is again, goes back to the RP thing, but like, I always use the microphone and that's why I hate, like, you know, people don't really communicate as much because I always, you know, try to go on the megaphone when I sail up to a ship because I, I truly try to act as a pirate, at least in adventure and in, in hourglass, you know, and all bets are off, you know, it's kill or be killed. But in an adventure, when I try to roll up on a ship, I, I basically, you know, I roll up alongside them, I harpoon them, I get them in close and I say, Hey, like. Either surrender or die. Those are your options. Like, and 
some people like they they don't believe me and then they'll run and then spooky knows this because we've done this several times we'll chase them around the server for an hour and a half we eventually catch up to them we sink them and i said hey so did you enjoy the last hour and a half of your <laughs> you're wasting your time all you had to do was just stop for five seconds and talk to us <laughs> you could have avoided all of this yeah and guess so what I'll... in the end we still got all the treasure <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I, yeah, I'll 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 answer your question, John. We are sweat lords, and <laughs> if you meet us, I guarantee you we have more time than you do That's to play true. this game. We we will we will we, we will, will capture you your boat. The earth. Fair enough. <laughs> that's uh, that's gonna be the title of my uh, of the video for this for this podcast. Just so you're aware, we are sweat lords. Uh, that's gonna be that's in the thumbnail. Just just so you know, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I, I got the quote. I appreciate that. Spooky. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I want to, I want to have, uh, some individual questioning now. Um, so each of you will have different questions, uh, for the next, uh, for the next little bit. Um, I want to start with, I want to start with Spooky. Um, Spooky, how has Sea of Thieves evolved for you since you first started playing? Have you always been this kind of PVP centric individual or has there been, is there other aspects to your to your playstyle that the viewers may not be aware of? It's it's definitely been a semi recent thing. Once upon a time, all the, all the way back in 2018, 2019, those early days, I was definitely that PVE -er, um, because I I didn't know the mechanics of the game and I I didn't I didn't uh, it was all it was all about Pirate Legend and the grind to it. As, as Pirate Legend passed me by, and it came, became more about commendations, I was still definitely that pv -er. But uh, by end of 2019, beginning of 2020, Pirate Legend was very easily obtainable at that point. So I then decided to distinguish myself by my skill in battle and how much I'm willing to risk against all others. No, I, I was, I was definitely your, your scrawny little wobby that you'd, you'd steal his two, his two captain's chests and sink him once upon a time. As a follow-up, do you think any player can do what you did and go from a PVE -er to a self-proclaimed PVP sweat? I I do. I do think it is a game where... Well, actually, I do and I don't. It is a game that is, as they say, tools, not rules. So you, you and I have everything, all the same stuff at our disposal. It's just how we use it and our game knowledge. If you are willing to give the game the time it needs to mold you into a, an all-knowing pirate, you you could become better than me easily. But I think it is also a very unforgiving game. I think people get jaded very quickly nowadays and they end up uh, quitting and never logging on because they're, me and Poppy would say this very often when we sing people, your loot isn't yours until you've sold it. And that is the thing I, I hope people begin to realize more and more. It's not yours until you've sold it. And if you haven't sold it, it's mine. <laughs> That's fair enough. That's fair enough. Popbeard, considering your history with the game, is there a particular... I know you've talked a lot about year one. Is there a particular update or a particular sort of event that took place in the early days of Sea of Thieves, whether it was, you know, specifically in Arena or whether it was in the adventure that you truly thought, this is what I came to play for? Um, that's actually a good question. Um, honestly, Curse Sales was so awesome. Like, Curse Sales was still, in my opinion, the best event that they've ever added to this game and it has given us a great uh world event that finally is profitable <laughs> can you go into a bit more detail for the viewers uh, who may not know what curse sales is so curse sales 
uh, was back in, oh God, October of 2018, I think, somewhere around there, September. I, I don't know. It's forever ago. And um, basically, uh, Wanda the Warsmith, well, actually, she wasn't the Warsmith yet, but Wanda the Weaponsmith of Golden Sands, Wanda with an A, not an O, by the way. The O is her sister. Um, she, uh, cause we had previously just had this, and I, I will never forget. We were all, cause we had just come off hungering deep. Right. And so then we had the sunken curse in like, uh, July or August. And I remember the lead up to the sunken curse. Everybody's like, Oh, it's going to be mermaids. We're finally getting the mermaids from the trailer. There's going to be mermaids everywhere. It's going to be cool. There's going to be underwater things and mermaids. And, <laughs> and then all we got was mermaid statues <laughs> and you had to destroy a hundred of them. <laughs> But uh, and then and then, you know, so and because of that, like uh, supposedly the lore behind it was Wanda. Um, she unearthed Flameheart's cannon, you know, from the Burning Blade, which we all know or well, maybe people don't know. But on Wanderer's Refuge, there is a little secret lair underneath the cave in the grotto. And that's, you know, Wanda's workshop, which was uh, part of Curse Sales. You had to go in and find uh, Wanda's workshop and figure out what she was working on. And that's how Cursed Cannonballs came to be. And now when Cursed Sales came out, they that's when Cursed Cannonballs were introduced. However, as a player, you still couldn't use them yet. Like, it, they were only the Skelly ships had them. And so the way the event worked, it was over the course of three weeks and uh, all the time-limited awards. So my, my figurehead and the Bone Crusher ship set and all the things that or Spooky didn't get, and always hates me every time I put on those cosmetics. I don't, I don't hate you. I didn't even know the game existed then. I joined <laughs> whatever that month is, four months before the end of the year is, that November. one. I joined yeah. then. Yeah. So basically, what the event was, is there were uh, different fleets in the different uh, zones. So there was the uh, Ancient Isles was the first week. The second week was the shores of plenty and then the third week was the wilds and then the third third final week one of the crews was you know the warsmith which was wanda's ship but the the thing was the way the commendations work is um there were three different sets of sails and this is also actually by the way this is when the brigantine was first added to the game and alliances were added to the game this this was actually the day that I was very upset because once we found out what people did with alliances, I was like, oh man, this sucks as a as a PVE. But I had a lot of fun breaking up alliances. But that's besides the point. Um, and so basically, what you had to do and to get the Conqueror of Skeleton Fleets, which is where my Bone Crusher Curse cosmetic and ship stuff is from, uh, you had to sink two hundred skeleton galleons. And when Curse Sales came out, there were only Skeleton Galleons. And the way the fleet battles worked is uh, the one in Shores of Plenty was north of uh, Smuggler's Bay. The one in the Ancient Isles, if I recall correctly, was south of Devil's Ridge. And the one in uh, the Wilds was up in Marauder's Arch. And there were three different sets of sails. There was the Protector of Ancient Isles, Protector of Shores of Plenty, and Protector of the Wild Sails. And to get some of the commendations, you had to form a fleet, which meant you had to alliance with, you know, other ships. And this is why I still think to this day this event was so cool, um, is you had to have everybody have the same sails, like, and then go do the event in that zone. And then the other hard part was at certain times of the day, certain fleets had certain cursed cannonballs, and you had to complete all the different so, like, you really had to sweat to get all the commendations because they were, like, some obscure times to get, like, the right crew for the right commendations. And the uh, originally they were kind of buggy, so and there was, like, no loot until you killed the captain ship. And originally it was, like, always waves of two galleons at once, and there would be... You'd have to fight six waves, and then the final wave would be the captain ship. So you'd have to fight 13 galleons. And mind you, the event liked to reset sometimes. If a ship sailed out and back in, it would reset. So then you have to kill another, you know, 12 galleons by 13. So we developed the uh, the ram and bucket method. I just remember, like, that was probably one of the coolest events. And then, of course, uh, a couple of months later, Shrouded Spoils comes out. They add in, you know, the uh, Legend of the Sea of Thieves title. And me and my friends, who obviously, for Cursed Sails, we were already all pirate legends because we had been pirate legends since before hungering deep and uh 
that we all saw that Legend of the Sea of Thieves combination where it was like, you must sink 500 skeleton ships as a pirate legend. We're like, do the 200 we already did count? And Rare's like, nope. And we're like, well, that sucks. <laughs> Captain C before Captain C. <laughs> Oh, you have no idea the amount of times that Rare has been like, here's a new commendations that we've added. You've already done this, but we didn't track it back when you did it. So do it again. Have fun. <laughs> I think we all can. I think we all can. I think we all can. Um, that's awesome. And I, I love the enthusiasm that you have when you share that particular story. Um, I think everyone kind of has like their moment in Sea of Thieves when they play the game, whether it's the first time they, you know, first time they, they get through a Fort of Fortune the first time they they finish their tall tales and get the get their gold curse or the first time, you know, they they're able to like punch up and defeat a bigger ship than they are. I think uh, those are those are definitely moments that people can remember in the game. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it kind of brings uh, up a point where, you know, see these itself being the sandbox that it is, is full of adventure. It's just a matter of going out and finding what adventure the best suits you. Um, Spooky, you, you brought up something earlier that I wanted to circle back on. Um, you mentioned that you play in uh, OCE servers. And I wanted to ask you about that particular experience because um, not many not many folks um, hear from uh, folks who play in OCE servers. So what is the experience like uh, playing Sea of Thieves in those servers compared to when you, let's say, you hop on Potbeard servers, which uh, I believe are are North America. Um, what is that like? It is interesting, intense, and fun. There's more sharks. I've been on his servers. There's way more sharks on Aussie <laughs> servers. I don't know why, but it's true. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. I need more people to come here. It's the... <laughs> don't tell him. Um, he might be right. But anyway, um, it, it's our servers are fine, but our population of players is very low. Um, so peak hours of say hourglass, you'll get a is midday till five, dropping off rapidly from five onwards, unless it's you know a weekend or whatever. Be that as that may. Um, and from anywhere in between there, you will be left alone, be that adventure or hourglass. And this was brought to my attention in hourglass because past six, you go to say 9 p.m., you can very easily fight your friends and very easily find boats you want to fight that you are specifically looking for on my servers because there aren't that many people. So when I go over to Potbeard servers, I might have to deal with 300 MS and I might be laggy and I might be a monster on your boat and teleport and kill you, What be that as that may. But I fight a large variety, it's all very fun and I very rarely have a bad time, even though my servers themselves are... Even though my servers are low, Popbeard does me a great honor and let me sail on his boat, and I get to enjoy the game with him on servers that are more lively. I think the reason your servers are low, though, is the sharks, bro. They're, they're, like, that okay. one night that we hopped on, like, literally, we sank a brig. I jumped in the water. I kid you not, seven sharks. And it wasn't hungering deep. Like, because the hungering deep, there was sharks everywhere. You put a toe in the water, there were like three of them behind you. Well, yeah, that's just us. What do you want from us? Yeah, we we have to we have to punch like sharks to like swim. It's they that oh yeah, there's no water. It's all sharks. <laughs> it was at this point that the game had booted me from our interview. On my return, however, I found a Reaper sloop approaching the outpost. Seeing this as a prime opportunity to watch sweats at work. I stayed behind as Potbeard and Spooky boarded and sank the enemy ship, raised Reaper Emissary, and turned in all the loot for a nice quick score. And that would have been the end of a happy tale, except we were surprised by the arrival of two toxic cheaters. Why do you bring me a real flag, you uh, Bring me okay. a real flag, stupid And I do mean toxic. Not wanting to deal with the hassle, we scuttled the ship and changed seas, looking to head to Reaper's hideout 
to continue the interview. Shockingly, the two cheaters somehow found the server we had jumped to. Teleported to our boat and continued their toxicity again. They had a grudge against our guests and didn't care about the consequences. So here we are coming off of that sort of shenanigans that we could see uh, teleportation, wall hacks, uh, people actually following uh, our, our guests from server to server. So there's definite signs of cheating here. And I'm curious, uh, Spooky and Potbeard, like, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, what are your thoughts on this? What are your thoughts on the state of uh, cheating in Sea of Thieves? I mean, as, uh, you know, what just happened, and uh, I'm sure there'll be a small little clip of it, but, I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's pathetic. People that cheat, like, grow up. Like, it's it's sad. It's childish. Like, if you have to cheat in a video game, you are a pathetic person. Yeah, like, cheating is just, it's pathetic. Like, that's why I took a big break last year during Season 7, because I just got sick and tired of trying to stream, play with my friends, and deal with you know idiots like that and then um like we were talking earlier we were playing hourglass and that's the main reason i you know stepped away from hourglass was because we we got our skelly curses and then every time we'd load up on a galleon be another uh galley full of cheaters and it's just like that's you can beat them sure but like it's still not fun like having to do a bunch of stupid just to beat somebody that's cheating and it's like bro how sad is your life that you have to cheat in a video game to feel good and then to talk on top of it? Like, imagine not only cheating because you're pathetic and bad, but then being toxic on top of that. It's like, bro, you're the reason why people don't want to try to get into PvP because PvP should be fun. It should be gentlemanly combat. You should be able to, at the end of the fight, say GG, you know, talk about, hey, like, this was a cool part of our battle or so on and so forth, which has happened many times with fights that I've gotten in with who are with people who are actual PvPers and not, you know, pathetic losers like the people who cheat. And it's just it really like, again, it ruins the game for people regardless. So uh, rare. Uh, do something about it. It's kind of sad because that's oh. literally the main reason I don't play the game anymore is because I don't want to. Like, I just want to play the game. I want to fight people who are good. I don't mind fighting people who are better than me. But cheating, like, what's the point? Like, it's just lame. I I think cheating is a very big problem. I think they need to do stuff about it. Um, the This is a absolute crippling blow to the rare devs, especially given their recent um post about them banning 7000 accounts um i guarantee you the only people they've actually banned are maybe f you could probably count it's it's less than 100 people rare needs to do something in game about the cheats while also doing something to stop the easily accessible alt accounts because that's a grand statistic of 7,000 accounts banned with our help. That's great, except at a minimum, half of those accounts are people that were banned, that have been banned before and have just made an alt account because it's so easily accessible. We yep. would have a much better time as people who get targeted if you actually had to offer a vital piece of contact information be that your phone or like your hardware ban but it shows the wider community that aren't hyper into pvp but still run into cheaters um they that they're trying to fix the problem that they're taking steps towards actually making it more difficult to um unban to to stop alt accounts because the main problem with cheating isn't the number of cheaters because the number of cheaters is very small oh, yeah, um, it is. it's it's just the volume of alt accounts that they're able to access i i also think they should 
at least be more open with their community on what they're doing regarding an anti-cheat because at the moment we have heard nothing well i i understand why they don't want to because here's the thing right any information that they give out on the anti-cheat is just information to the like hackers I'm, I, I don't i don't mean people. like i don't mean information involving the anti-cheat i mean yeah but even talking bringing... about what they're planning to do if they're implementing something new that's still new information that the hackers can use to try to figure out like to probe new areas to test new boundaries things like that just it's it is better that they keep people in the dark about it but they need to do something because this is ridiculous because that is literally what's killing the game right now it's what killed it's it's what killed Arena, partially. Um, although Arena mostly died due to toxicity and TDMs. But, um, and the fact that the servers were atrociously oh, okay. laggy. Like, even when I would queue up on NA West, it would give me, like, 120 MS. And it's like, like that's that's insane. The real issue, it comes down to, it, like, the people who are going to cheat are clearly dedicated to cheating. And they're going to find a way to circumvent whatever happens. And that's just... The nature of the beast, but Rare does need to do something about this because it, it's ridiculous. Well, your your ca your character is a is given a number that it it is an entity, um, so they just need to monitor servers because if you see this entity disappear and reappear over here w while somewhere in between interacting within a time period that's physically not possible that's a cheater it's 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 not that hard yeah. i think anyone anyone who uh has to deal with someone like that would totally understand where you're coming from there uh it's my first time seeing it uh in action and i was just severely disappointed uh and upset for you because that's stalker type levels and uh, that's quite unfortunate <laughs> and i i don't I don't like it at all, for sure. No, I, again, like, I'm just completely blown away that, like, literally it's been a year, and I haven't streamed, I haven't done anything, and then out of the blue, they just show up just to f*** with us. And it's like... And, and clearly they, you know, spooky too, like, with the comment about, you know, spooky still playing with me. It's like, bro, like, get a life. Yeah, you... you they... Their goal is to sow so discourse and ruin other people's fun. If if you're if you get aggravated enough to cheat in a game, if they're if you're not good enough at a game, or you get angry enough that you you are you want to cheat to ruin other people's games, it is not a game for you. I had a good friend who got who liked Sea of Thieves, but there were he got very very strongly uh angry with it due to some things that would happen naturally in the game and i told him truthfully if you're getting angry at this it's not worth you playing the game you're you're just not gonna have enough you're not gonna have a fun time other people aren't gonna have a fun time and overall it's it's gonna be bad for the game so he he left and it was hard but I knew it was the right thing for him and the game itself. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, you just have to... You got to be cognizant of, of what it's doing to you. And I don't think that, that these folks understand, like, just what it's done to them, you know, as, as human beings, uh, which, is really, which is really the disappointing part. Um, all right. Well, I, 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 I wanted to get your perspectives on it since we just had gone through it um and i hope that you know i hope that they're they'll be banned uh that uh, at least in, in that for some time they'll be disrupted uh and i hope that uh, that rare uh does implement something that will cause this to stop happening on a, on a permanent level um i want to wrap things up here and i and i don't want to wrap it up on a, on a down note so, so I want to be, I want to be a, a bit more optimistic here. Uh, and I want to ask each of you, uh, what is it that you're looking for in the next, I mean, besides anti-cheat, because we've already talked about that, <laughs> but what is it that you're looking for over the course of the next 12 months 
for Sea of Thieves? What is it that will that will keep you playing, that will keep you enticed, that will keep you engaged in the game? Uh, let's start with Potbeard. Um, honestly, some more like rewards for Hourglass and like I don't know, a new implementation for Hourglass. Or just just more PvP related stuff. I don't care if it's Reaper run voyages or whatnot, and just more cosmetics related to PvP. Cause I, I don't know. Like the only really way to show your progress in the game is, is cosmetics, right? And I love PvP, but like the problem is is you know, people get upset, people get angry, and you know, like Spooky said, the loot's not yours until, you know, you sell it. But I, I wish more people would PvP with the mindset of uh loot so hopefully you know we can i mean they tried to implement that in hourglass like i said with the defensive and the treasure stack but maybe they need to you know further increase the reward which i guess theoretically would be a nerf to the overall grind which i don't think anybody would complain about not that i really want there to be a nerf i think it's good for there actually to be hard things to achieve in the game that was one of the fun things about year one that I, I enjoyed was that you know like once you you accomplish something you truly had a sense of accomplishment because you knew you put in a lot of work to get it so i don't know oh and honestly the that mystery voyage i want those as a new gold order quest uh you're talking you're talking about the uh the h quests uh, dude yeah oh my god yeah dude those quests were great but as somebody who like literally knows the sea of thieves like the back of my hand like it was so satisfying spooky what about you I I will I, I I will say the same things I th but I'll also elaborate on them. I'll say more PvP based cosmetics, um, but I'd say give more cosmetics to Hourglass prior to level one hundred because. That's true. A lot of people don't stick because with the grind for that people reason. People don't stick with the grind because all you get is a title every 10 levels and a curse, a clothing piece or a ship piece or something in between each um, title would be great. It would make the grind much more rewarding. That is the one thing I will say that was rather hard to do was stick with the grind. Yeah. But I will also say, I will also say, I will say two things. One is this game should not be as easy as it is. We, we, we're, we're old salts and we know the game in and out, but it is becoming far too easy to be uh, come. It's become far too easy to be a pirate legend. It lowers the sense of achievement and progression you get when reaching Pirate Legend, and I don't think there's an um, I don't think there's enough there for people. Uh, how do I word this? Anyway, they're skewing the game towards new players and leaving their veterans in the dust. We we as veterans, we've seen re-releases, we've seen um, commendations like captaincy and whatnot many times before. It hurts, but we get over it. Um, and, but now in the last year or so, they are heavily backing towards, um, Game Pass and making the game a breeze for newer pirates, which I understand they have to make money and whatnot. I, I don't blame them entirely for it, but they should introduce some hard commendations like level 1000 for each uh, PVP faction. Maybe, maybe they do a really hard... PVE, um, commendation, maybe not, like, a hundred gold hoarder votes, vaults. I've done that. That was hard, but the reward for the vault sales is personally worth it. They are very nice sales. Regarding Flameheart, I hope they, they bring him back soon, and I hope that we we get to meet him in the the flesh, and he doesn't become a you know like a like a Ethan Lord or something like that that we have to beat. I hope we can we can side with him and fight with him instead of against him. Yeah, I'll be very upset if they railroad us into actually ending up having to fight against Flameheart. I'll be I'll be very upset about that. That's fair. That that's coming from two true I guess not true blue but true red 
uh, Flameheart Pirates right here. Uh, Spooky, Potbeard, thank you so much for taking the time today to speak with me um, and to to share your stories with the uh, with the audience here on Build Shock. I appreciate it, and I, I appreciate the time, uh, and I appreciate the fact that we were able to come back after uh, what had happened and and kind of discuss and hope that uh, that we see some changes moving forward. Yeah, no, it was a blast. Thanks for uh, having us, and yeah, hopefully uh, we get some good changes coming to Sea of Thieves soon. Keep the game alive and uh, get more people playing it, more people interested in PvP. Keep the toxicity out of PvP. It's a gentlemanly sport, even though we love blood. There you go. Well said. Well said. Thank you, gentlemen.